At the 2011 Moses Conference, I caught up with Gary Zimmer, a professional in the field of sustainable agriculture for around 40 years now. His company, Midwestern Bioag, has been providing consulting services and solutions to farmers since 1984. He's the author of two books, The Biological Farmer, A Complete Guide to the Sustainable and Profitable Biological System of Farming, and the recently released follow-on, Advancing Biological Farming, which he co-authored with his daughter. He's a highly sought-after speaker who's presented at many conferences around the country, dozens of times every year, and he's been involved in farmer education programs in Australia, Europe, New Zealand, and South Africa. He also operates the BioAg Learning Center, where he field tests biological farming practices and products, and the Zimmer Family Farm, Otter Creek Organic Farm, which includes a 200-cow organic dairy, utilizes the ideas that Gary's learned throughout his lifetime. The main thrust of this short little interview was to get Gary's thoughts on what a new farmer or someone switching to sustainable farming needs to be thinking about and doing in order to be successful. Gary's also very focused on the health of the soil and how they produce healthy plants, animals, and people. Well, this was not a uh, this was not planned in advance. This particular interview, uh, Gary just happened to stop by the Organic Voices table in the lobby where I was setting up for the day. So the camera's a bit shaky, and I apologize for that, but the little bit of wisdom that Gary imparted was well worth it. So let's hear some of the sage advice from one of sustainable agriculture's longtime experts. Gary Zimmer with Mid Midwest BioAg. He's been doing, how long have you been doing this this kind of work? I've been in business here 25 years. I've okay. been at it for about 40. Uh huh. So, so I, I'm just wanting to get your thought on what would be the one thing that you would tell like new farmers or maybe somebody who's wanting to switch you know, from tradition, conventional farming into a more, you know, biological farming type kind of methodology. What, what, where, where should they, what, what should be their thought process? Where should they really start? So, and of course, we, <clears throat> I'm always say we got to start with education. I got enough knowledge, hard work. The knowledge I got to have is really that the fact that this is a system. There's no magic silver bullet. We got to lay out a plan. So you got soil, you got life in the soil, and you got minerals. And so you really got to uh, do your study and understand the system is where different products fit in the system. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, so so you're talking about and in products you're talking about like getting balanced minerals in the soil, that sort of thing. And and a plan in place. We're just doing a project for uh, with Penn State out here, and they send us soil tests. Why well, send soil tests by themselves? What are they doing about green manure grass? What are they doing about tillage? Is there life right. in those soils? Yeah. So I can't just throw a bunch of minerals out there and hope right. everything works. And I can't just grow green manure crops or throw compost. So uh, so when I, I have to have a soil test, but I also have to have a a plan. I like to lay out a three-year plan to say, how am I going to deal with the chemistry, the minerals? How am I going to do with the physical to make right. sure I create an ideal home for soil life? Then how am I going to feed this off and how do I evaluate it? Right, because building that ecosystem does take time. I mean, a lot it of people think, hey, I'm going to do yeah. this in one year, and it's it's just not, you know, it, it, yeah. It, yeah. So I was just visiting on the way here a large farm from Idaho. Uh, they actually were doing business in China, and that's how I it, it's a backward story, but I got met them in China. I met their part of their products, and so they have they farm thousands of acres but under uh, conventional farming. They dump on tons of phosphorus and nitrogen and chemicals under organic farm. Nothing. They just harvest hay and sell it. Now I said, why did people think that was organic? That's almost embarrassing. And they're not that they're not used to spending money. They think organic is doing nothing. Well, then we get bad crops and get a bad name. And what kind of nutritional value would that be if you just put nothing on and sold hay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, cover crops and green manure crops earlier. Really. You know, there's a lot of new cover crops coming out. We hear, we hear about tillage radish now and those kind of things. What, what, how can you speak to that? I mean, do you, what, what, where, it, it, there's different things to try. You know, where, what's a, And I think the thing is, and in my new book, I try to explain that a lot more, and that is the fact that we got to look at the, car, the cover crop is for what purpose? If I'm doing brassicas and tiller radish, am I trying to till with it? Well, they're really daikon radishes, and they do poke holes in the ground, and they, but they also fumigate soils. If you want to grow mycorrhizae fungus, you better, they might not fit you. What's your next crop, and what are you trying to do with them? Yeah. See, if I wanted to build uh, organic matter, I'd grow some big, tall, complex carbons. If I wanted to, uh, that was my question out in Penn State, if I wanted to grow corn, I'm going to follow a highly succulent bacteria food. Yeah, uh-huh. And, and, and there's all those that aspect of it too. I mean, is that why it's taken so long, two to three years, to really get a good soil? Because it takes time to get the mycorrhiza and all those other kind of things going. Yeah. And that was why we said, with after you get the knowledge, as I was gonna say, if I was a conventional farm, I tell them get biological first. First, start getting your soils healthy. And start getting the mineral. Start understanding rotations and green mineral crops and when to till and when not to till and on and on. And then slowly say, do I need the herbicides anymore? Do I need the insecticides? You can get rid of insecticides and fungicides fairly quick. 
plan. How do I get better wheat? You better get the equipment. If you go slow, you don't fail and get it. I guess it takes two to three years or longer to get the biology going. Depends on how aggressive you want to be. Yeah, yeah, great. That's that's super. Well, hopefully we'll see more farmers. I, has that been your experience? You're seeing more? Yes. Yeah, great. Well, thanks a lot, right. Gary. We appreciate it. Bye. My pleasure. I found, uh,